Welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the biggest reasons why I love Rust. And it's one of the biggest reasons why Rust is kind of a big deal right now. I've been writing malware on stream for the last couple of weeks now, mainly in Rust. I started off in C, C++ and just abandoned that for a variety of different reasons, one of which we'll actually talk about in this video. Um, since switching to Rust, I've found a lot of fun quirks and kind of like things that you need to learn but overall, it's a much better language, and this is one of the biggest reasons why Rust is a better language. We're gonna talk about scopes and lifetimes. So if we look over here at this code, we've got basically three functions that kind of explain what scopes and lifetimes are and how borrowing, taking, and giving back works with Rust. Um, so in C, C++, this is going to be kind of your closest comparison. In C and C++, you have pointers. And what pointers are is it, instead of representing a block of memory, they represent a pointer to a block of memory or basically a memory address that is where this block of memory lives. So with a normal case, whenever you create a variable on the heap, you basically have this block, this contiguous block of memory, you know, let's say eight bytes wide, that's going to contain your variable, whether it's a string or an integer or anything like that, it's going to contain your variable. So I can create this block of memory, and then I can create a pointer that says, hey, at this address in memory, we're pointing at something. That something can be basically anything. So basically what we're doing with pointers is we're basically saying like, you know, here's a memory address that we're going to do something with. So if I create, so let's go ahead and I'll kind of denote this in comments. Um, the way you would do this in um, C, C++ is I would say, Let's say an int uh, var equals five. And then I would say um, int var pointer is equal to, let's see, int pointer is equal to the address of var. So basically this is an int pointer. Um, that's kind of like the pseudo code of how you would write it in C and basically var is going to be at a certain memory address and it's going to contain the number five. Pointer is going to say this memory address points at the, or this variable contains a memory address where var is located. So that's still present within Rust. It's a little bit different, but it's still present. That idea is still present. Um, the way they kind of enforce scoping and lifetimes is kind of based on that and the way that you can kind of handle it as well. So if we start out, we're just going to create an initial variable called starter. It's a normal string that contains the value initial underscore var. So we're going to print it out to prove that we have what's called ownership. We'll explain ownership here in a second, but proving that we can access this variable essentially. So once we print this out, it's going to print out starter and we are going to pass starter into the give back function. Let's go up and look at the give back function right here. The give back function takes an input, which is a string, and it returns a string. So we are going to print what this variable is. So we're going to say we took whatever the string is, but we're giving it back. And then we're going to return the same exact string. So if we look down here at how we actually implemented this, we are then storing the same exact string into given back. And now we're proving right here that we do, in fact, we, we can still access that variable. So let's go ahead and run this. I'll comment out these lines real quick so we can kind of just show one thing at a time. So if we go ahead and run this, we will see our initial variable is initial var and it's owned by the main function. We took initial var, but we're giving it back and we got back initial var. So this all runs perfectly fine. Now here's what's going on underneath the hood. We are passing this variable right here back. Or we are passing this variable over to the give back function. The give back function now has ownership over that variable, meaning at the end of this function, input, the memory block that that string is stored into is going to be wiped out. So if we don't do anything to actually preserve that variable, it's going to be gone. And let me show you how that looks. If we instead down here, if we instead tried to print out starter, we're going to get a compiling error or a borrow checker error. So 
we try to run this, it's not going to work. Borrow of move value start. So the value is borrowed after a move. The move occurs right over here. The move occurs when we actually call this function. So when we call the function, it is moving starter into that function. And after this function is over, starter is gone. So if we go back here and we do this, so if we go back here and just you know change it back to the way it was, we're going. This is all going to be fine because we're not accessing. We're not actually accessing starter. We're accessing given back, which is the return value of this function. So let's move on to the next example. So let's comment this stuff out. Next example is a little bit different. This is called a borrower, and this is what actually uses these pointers. So this pointer right here. It, we are not instantiating a string, we are instantiating a pointer to a string. So pointer actually holds the address of this string right here, pointer underscore var. So we are passing that over to borrower. Now notice borrower doesn't return anything. Borrower just takes a pointer to a string, prints it out, and doesn't do anything with it. But we can still access pointer right here because we passed a pointer to that variable. We did not pass the actual variable itself. So if we run this, it's going to be perfectly fine, I promise, unless I made a dumb mistake. If we run this, perfectly fine, borrowed pointer underscore var, we still have ownership of pointer underscore var in main. So this is perfectly fine because we pass a pointer and not the actual variable itself, perfectly fine. Now, let me show you what's not fine. We actually kind of gave a demonstration just a second ago. So this is what you can't do. So taken is equal to string taken underscore var. We pass taken over to taken and we don't return it. We don't do anything with it. We just pass it to this function. And once this function ends, taken is now out of scope and it's destroyed. So right here, we're not going to be able to run this line. We're going to get a, a borrow checker bug because this tries to access a variable that is run out of the scope that it was given to. It is given to the taker function right here. So it is now within that scope. And once that scope ends, then taken's gone. We can't access it anymore. Unless we returned it through that function or unless we used a pointer instead, this isn't going to work. And I'll prove it by showing you it doesn't work. See, we've got the error. Value is borrowed after a move. So let's talk about why this is awesome. The reason why this is awesome and not just like a quirk that's kind of annoying that you're going to have to deal with is because instead of having a garbage collector, which we'll talk about in a second, and most importantly, instead of me having to deal with the memory myself like I would in C, C++, I don't have to do that. All of these variables kind of, they, once they pass out of scope, they're not used anymore and all of that memory is freed up. And there's no garbage collector. What a garbage collector is, is basically it is a background process that's constantly running that is freeing up memory that is no longer going to be used anymore. So that has a pretty significant performance overhead and can kind of lead to some weird bugs. Um, lots of security issues have kind of come from garbage checkers not working the way you would think they would and causing bugs that way. But basically it's just an overhead that causes performance issues. So the other side of you know the, the coin when Rust wasn't around in this kind of scope and lifetime um, approach wasn't around was you had to manually manage the memory on your own, which is a pain in the ass. Basically, every time you allocate memory, you also have to free that memory. Now, there are some awesome programmers, including Brian Flurry, who's written extensively on the you know memory management issue, who have already kind of solved this through different programming models and different mental models, and that's awesome. Rust does it automatically. Rust is very fast, doesn't have a garbage collector. Yes, it comes with some kind of quirks in the way that you have to actually write your code, but it's still really rad and you know you can kind of get used to quirks a lot faster than you can having memory leak bugs and things like that. So I hope this made sense somewhat, a little bit. Um, if it didn't, leave a comment, ask some questions, and we'll kind of chat about it that way. Take it easy. Peace.